scientists. We are going to do lab from unit three on density and buoyancy. So we're going to use a simulation that's outside of K-12. So I'll show you how to get there and how to use the simulation. Let's get going. So here's the lab sheet. You're going to need 4.03 density and buoyancy. And the Minnesota Science Standard is using gravitational force to explain the motions of objects near Earth in the universe. We're going to be talking about gravity and how it works. We're also going to be talking about density and buoyancy, so make sure you understand the definitions of both. Here is the URL we're going to use to get to this simulation here. And our first question here is what can you do in the simulation? What happens when you put objects in the fluid? And we're going to play with a bunch of these sliders and buttons and see what happens. So if we go into the simulation, you can see that you've got blocks right here. My block's pretty heavy right now, so if I drop it, it's going to sink. If I choose a material and say I want it to be styrofoam, you can see that it's going to float. So one thing you can do is click material and change the different things the block is made out of. If you want to adjust the volume, you can make a bigger block of wood. The mass is going to change with the volume if you pick a material like this, because the density of a particular material is always going to be the same, like this particular kind of wood is always going to have the same density. If you want to pick a density that's not available in the materials, let's say you want something very, very dense, like you want five kilograms for one liter, that is going to be a very dense little piece of uh, material, and it's going to sink. So here are some things you can adjust. You can adjust mass, volume, if you click material, you can click the kind of material that your block is made of. If you want a custom material, you click my block and you can put in the mass and the volume and make a unique material. So there's lots of things, different things that you can do in this simulation. You can adjust the mass, you can adjust the volume, and if you want to create a neat, um, your own material, you can create a unique density by putting in your own mass and volume. So that's a good start for question one. Here's the lab sheet for question two and question three. So it says explore different materials and blocks of different sizes. Which materials sink and which materials float? So up in that corner where it said the different materials like styrofoam and wood and ice, we can check out which ones sink and which ones float. Um, in our own words, in your own words, um, explain what you think the label volume means and also explain what mass means. Explore what happens when you make the blocks bigger and smaller. Does the mass change? This is assuming you keep the same material. Does the density change? Does the floating or sinking if you have the same material change? And then here's where we design our own block. You click this thing. Up here, we were just on material. For, so for question two, just pick a particular material. For question three, click my block, and you can change both the mass and the volume. And then you can try to make your block sink and try to make it float. So you probably have enough information to do questions two and three. Let's talk about questions four and five, where you try to create a block with very high density and very low density. And hypothesize whether a high density block will sink or float, and then tell the block's volume and the block's mass. Same for number five. Let's go try this in the simulation. So for question two, you're going to want to be on material. And you're just exploring different materials. Like, let's say I want to make a bigger wood block. Or 
I want to make a bigger brick. Notice when I increase the volume, what happens to the mass? Or if I decrease the mass, what happens to the volume? So for question two, make sure you're on material. For question three, where you're playing around with making different densities here by putting in your own number of kilograms per liter. Let's just try this one for the heck of it. This is sort of a mystery material somewhere between wood and ice. So for number three, make sure it's on my block and you can mess around here. For number four, we want to make a very high density block. So let's try a very big number here. Let's try an even number of liters, let's say two, to make the math easy. And let's say I'm going to make six. That's way beyond aluminum. It's more dense than aluminum. So when I make a very dense material, does it float? You can answer that question yourself. Now if I make a much less dense material, let's say I put in half a kilogram, that floats pretty well. That's between wood and ice. Let's make something even less dense. Oh, it won't let me put in 0.5. We'll just have to up the volume here. That's even less dense than wood, and it floats pretty well. You can notice how much of the block is out of the water. There's only a little bit of a block in the water, and most of it is out. That's important when you're looking at the density of an object. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So for number six, we need to pay attention how much of the block is in the water and how much of the block is out of the water. This whole block is in the water. This, most of this block is in the water and a lot of this block is out of the water. Remember the density of water is one kilogram per liter. Something that's floating just above the water has a density very similar to water, but a little less. I would say this is about 90% of the density of water. So 90%, which is 0.9 times one kilogram per liter is about 0.9. You can estimate how much is sticking out of the water here and figure out what the density is here. All we know for B is that the density is more than water and water is one kilogram per liter. So I'll let you finish up number six. For the second part of number six, you can go into the simulation and click my object, that little button in the very upper left hand corner, and check your answers by playing with a block to make it behave like A, B, and C, and then seeing what happens. For number seven, test your ideas using the objects of same volume. All these blocks are the same, and besides being different colors, the blocks also have what? For eight, you're also going to go to that beige box in the upper right hand corner and you're instead of clicking same volume, you're going to click same mass. Um, all the blocks have the same mass. You're going to figure out what that is. And all of the blocks are different colors and different um, observe how they float, and you're going to do some other observations as well. So here for question seven, you're going to click same mass, and you'll see some blocks of the same mass appear, and then you're going to do some experiments, kind of mess around and see what's going on. For number eight, you're going to use same volume. Notice all the blocks are the same size, but what's different here besides the colors? For question nine, you can use your experience with different blocks of different densities to figure out which blocks are low density and whether they're going to sink or not. Where barely sinks fits on this 
and of course we're using water as the fluid. Barely floats and floats well. Uh, do things that float well, for example, are they very low density or are they high density? Which end is floats well going to be on? So then in number 10, we need to go over here to the mystery when we get into the simulation. And we're going to figure out the density of the blocks using division if we know their volume and mass. And we can figure out their volume and mass in the mystery part of the simulation. I'll show you in just a moment. So, for example, we can take block A. Let's take it over here and put it on the balance. And we know that the mass is 65.14 kilograms. Now, if, oops, I only want to put one block in at a time. And we know that before we put the block in, let's put a block over here, there was 100 liters in the sort of bathtub tank. Now, if we put our block A in, it sinks. The whole thing's underwater. And this um, volume has changed. Just like when you get in the bathtub and the water level rises, or if you get in a little kid's pool, like you have when you were three or four, and you put your whole body under the water, the water level rises. Same with our block here. It's now the volume of the water plus the block is more. So you can take 103.38 and subtract 100 to get a volume of 3.38 liters. So we had a mass over here, because we put the block on the balance, and we got a volume. So now we have mass and volume, and mass divided by volume is density. So we can figure out the density. You can do the same for the other four blocks and fill out the table in the mystery question, number 10. You notice at the very bottom of the lab sheet, it says bonus round for extra credit. There are a bunch of optional questions here, but very good if you plan on going to college, majoring in science, thinking about engineering. Please make sure that you at least take a look at these questions if you're interested in continuing in science or even in practical arts like plumbing or electrical. You kind of need to know practical stuff. This is about tanks and ethanol and making um, ethanol from corn. And this is about a gas gauge. So there's some density things here from real life and you can work with those and get extra credit. So I'm gonna let you do those on your own. Thanks so much, this is Miss R.